It's been two years since this channel published this video on how to use the subway system in New York City in detail. It talks about things like how to read signs, how to find entrances, and where to stand and when. This video has been the best performing video of this channel, followed by these videos on how to pay for transit in New York City. However, a lot of you still have questions on how to use public transit, specifically the subway system in New York City. So I've gathered all the commonly asked questions so that today we can talk about things like fare capping, paying for multiple people, paying for kids, and the confusion between the air train, the path, and the subway. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. My name is Thea and you're watching a channel that talks about anything and everything public transit in New York City. As always, if you like videos like these, make sure to hit the like button and share it with others. Whether you're using a smartphone, credit card, or metro card, you can pay up to four people at a time. However, if you're using a metro card and it has unlimited on it, like seven day or 30 day unlimited, you can only use this card for yourself. So if you want everybody with you to have unlimited, everyone needs to have their own metro card. And if you just have money value on the metro card and not unlimited, then just like a credit card, you can pay up to four people at a time. So a lot of people ask this, how do you pay for more than one person with a single metro card or a credit card? So if you have four people with you, you don't tap your credit card four times and let four people go through. To pay for multiple people in your group, you pay once, then one person goes through, then pay again, then the second person goes through, etc. And you might be familiar with fare capping. That's when you get the rides for the week free after you paid for 12 rides. So how does that work when you're paying for more than one person at a time? Only the first tap will count towards the weekly fare cap. So if you took two trips and paid for four people, you only get two rides credited towards your cap. Once you reach the cap of 12 rides and you're still paying for others, only the first tap will be free. The air train at JFK, the New York City subway, and the path to New Jersey are different systems, but they all accept the Metro card. However, only the New York City subway accepts the unlimited rides, along with the local buses. And only these will accept a credit or debit card directly. The air train and the path will not. But word is out that the PATH is looking to get its own contactless payment system, so maybe in the near future, we can use a credit card directly on the PATH. Let's hope. A Metro card can hold both unlimited and dollar value. So when coming from JFK, you can put unlimited plus $8.25 on the same Metro card. The air chain will charge $8.25 and the subway will recognize the unlimited value. But this only works for one person. If there are two of you, you'll both need your own Metro card. But if you don't need unlimited, you can put any dollar amount on the Metro card and it can be used by both you or even four of you on the air train, subway, and even the path. If you opt to directly use a credit card on the subway, you will still need a Metro card for the air train and the path needs either a Metro card or a paper ticket. There's news that they're gonna try out Omni readers or credit card readers at the JFK airport. Hopefully this becomes a full-blown rollout so people no longer have to buy a Metro card just to use the air train. They can use a credit card for the air train and credit card for the subway and no need to be using machines to figure out what kind of card to get and just being confused. Wouldn't that be the day to be not confused? Here are more videos to guide you on these transit systems. A lot of people have been asking about the Metro card, if it's still available or has it been phased out. There's a lot of confusion on this because the MTA has been announcing that the Metro card will be phased out in 2023, but the date kept getting pushed later and later until now it's TBD. The Metro card is used by other transit systems, not just the subway and buses. However, today only the subway and buses have these credit card readers or Omni readers. And not only is the installation of readers the only issue, there's also the special fares to consider. Special discount cards like seniors, students, low income, and those with disabilities. And it sounds like they haven't figured out how to roll out these special fare cards. If you want a full breakdown on the Metro card, check out this video. I also often get asked what my favorite transit apps are, what do I recommend? I usually use Google Maps, City Mapper, and the transit app is another one that's good, but I don't always use it. 
because I've been using Google Maps and City Mapper for so long, I really haven't switched to any other app or tried any other app out. So if there's another app that you want to recommend, comment down below. What's great about Google Maps is that you can use it in most places around the world. I love it because when I travel, I don't need to download another map of the city. I could just use Google Maps and it does show me the transit that's available in that area. So there's no relearning a new app or downloading something that you might only use once. It's the same for City Mapper. City Mapper is available in a lot of cities around the world. What I like about City Mapper, it shows you all the options you have for transit and provides offline maps if they're available in that city. So if you lose signal for some reason, you still have the maps to guide you. However, when it comes to buses, apps are not always reliable. I was introduced to Pantograph when I was in Seattle because the bus system there is pretty robust. Pantograph gives you a live update on all the buses and sometimes even other transit systems in the area with some really good information. But what's important is you can see the bus coming or not coming. If Pantograph was available in New York, I would recommend it, but unfortunately it's not. If this is available in your city, comment down below and let me know how accurate or not accurate it is. But of all the apps and methods I use to see if a bus is on the way or how long the bus is going to take to get to me, I find the most accurate are these signs on the bus stops. So the bus stands will have these signs where you can text a number the code to the specific bus stand and you can get the time of the next bus arriving. This is a great way to double check if the app has lied to you or not, if that bus is going to get there in three to five minutes. And a lot of people travel to New York with kids and so they're always asking what about kids fare or how do I pay for my kids? If your kid can duck under the turnstile, they are free to enter, but the official height is 44 inches. But for parents with taller kids, I've been asked if they should just set up a digital wallet for each of their kids. If you don't care about fare capping because maybe you think you won't use the subway that much or you just don't want to deal with the hassle, then by all means, it's easier to just pay for everyone with one credit card. However, you won't be able to get the fare capping benefits for everyone just for one person. The other option is to get everybody their own Metro card or set up a digital wallet for everyone. The problem with giving everybody their own Metro card is if you have to refill it, you're gonna have to refill everybody's Metro card and it's a hassle. An OmniCard does exist, but I wouldn't recommend it for anybody visiting just because one, they don't have Omni machines yet at the station. You have to go to a convenience store to buy one. And two, they cost $5 versus a Metro card is only $1. As long as the Metro card is still available, Available, I do recommend it for tourists versus getting an Omni card or directly using just a credit card. Depending on your bank, maybe your bank will only allow for two transactions on a machine, maybe four. I get different feedback on this. It's a fraud prevention thing. So if you have a big family, I recommend bringing at least a couple credit cards or debit cards. And some people say their debit card did not work. These card readers accept Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, and other cards, but for debit cards, if yours requires a PIN for purchase, it will not work on these readers. So those are the answers to questions I often get. If you have more questions, comment below. And if you know the answer to these questions, also comment below. And together we form a transit community. Yay! The Metro card trips up a lot of people, mostly because it can have both unlimited and cash value on it. And there are different types of Metro card, but it's hard to know the distinction. Like the 25 ride at the JFK air train is a Metro card, but you can't put unlimited value on it and you can't put money on it. It's just for those 25 rides at the airport. But they look just the same on the front. And the student cards, I talked about this last week, the student cards have nine different types. At least the student cards look different from the Metro card. But the ideal future I dream of is that transit cards are only optional and you can pay everything with a credit or debit card. Because we all know how to use a debit or credit card. It's simple and it eliminates the need to use these machines to figure out fare, to figure out what kind of fare to buy, and to be able to use a credit or debit card regardless of whether you're transferring from the subway 
highway to the path to the Long Island Railroad even if you have to pay for each of these systems individually at least the hassle of figuring out how to get a ticket is eliminated you can just use your credit card what bothers me a lot is there's only one way to pay for the air train and that's to use a metro card so if you are planning to use a credit card once you get to new york to pay for the subway and buses and not have to deal with refilling a metro card you still have to get one at the jfk airport and it's an extra dollar on top of that $8.25 that you have to pay. And like I said earlier, they're looking into getting Omni readers and credit card readers at the airport. And I think that would be amazing and awesome for everybody because it's just this one thing that you have to pay to exit. Wouldn't it be nice to just pay it straight up with a credit card or debit card? Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. And if you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon page. Supporters get access to my creator and activities vlog. Here I share what's like being a creator and things I do in New York City. Check that out at patreon.com slash urban caffeine. Until the next video, have a great week ahead and happy New Yorking!